Thank you, Barry, and thank you, Chamber. It's always been delightful to work with the Virginia Chamber, and you and Ryan were such a great help to me when I was in the State House. I appreciate all the right to work legislation that we worked on closely together. I know you were the, you know, we would pass it easily in the House, and then you usually got me that final vote in the Senate, so I particularly appreciate that with our project labor agreement. Uh, bill and, and right to work secret ballot legislation. So thank you for all that you do and, and so many of the businesses here. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here and to discuss your blueprint, which you know you have me at hello. <laughs> and that you've done great work. And so when you're looking at issues like trade, which we fortunately passed this year, um, offshore energy and the whole energy economy, um, the XM Bank that we, we just got, we've been working on that. Um, regulatory reform and and making sure we get this economy growing again our tech economy our energy economy um, you know making our systems work better on the on that front so I thank you for all you do you're great allies to work with all of you here and I look forward to continuing to work with you in that same collaborative manner that we we're able to in Virginia I know it's more challenging here but I appreciate being able to work with you here uh, but one of the things I wanted to quickly mention today that I think really does kind of threaten our ability to really get back on track with a good economy um, really was sort of encapsulated last week when Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was here and he spoke eloquently, as he always does, about the battle between modernity and medieval Islamic terrorism. And tragically, uh, last week on Friday, we saw exactly what he was talking about and what he certainly lives every day. Civilian citizens who were going about their daily lives, once again, were tragically murdered by these terrorists who threaten our Western way of life. The victims were persons of all races, backgrounds, religions, ages, and nationalities. An American citizen was killed, and I know we all probably know somebody in Paris that we've heard from, a student, a businessman. These are international areas of, of trade and travel, and we know this threatens our economy. You know, tourism, it's an industry for us, certainly an industry for Paris. On September 11th, when we experienced that very same thing, I believe the Capitol, you know, where we are here right now, was spared that day only because the brave Americans on that fourth aircraft did what Americans and those who love freedom, so there's a lot of other, besides Americans, there's a lot of those, right? They do what they instinctively do when they're threatened. They fought, they died, but they saved the lives of countless others and averted an even greater tragedy. You know, on September 11th, we realized Al-Qaeda was at war with us, but unfortunately, we weren't taking that seriously and weren't at war with them, as was said later on in the September 11th report. With the recent murders, we know that ISIS is at war with us in the whole Western world. It's not just Paris. We know, and our FBI director has been telling us for months now, that we have threats all over this country. So we are going to have to redouble this area because this was an act of war. And we know, as the Wall Street Journal said this week, they said, wake up, it was actually directed to the president, but I think the notion of waking up is something we all need to be mindful of. Paris suggests that the Islamic State has embarked on a strategy of urban, unconventional warfare wherever it is able to across the West. There are open investigations now throughout the country in most states. In Manassas, in my district, in the 10th district, we had a 17-year-old high school student who was recruiting terrorists online and got somebody over to Syria to be training with them. Fortunately, our FBI, as they have frequently done with the intelligence tools that we reauthorized this year, has been tracking down this threat. And they have been making sure that we can intercept it wherever we might be able to. So we are going to have to redouble those efforts. The reason I'm bringing this up at a Chamber of Commerce event is obviously you know the kind of economic hit we took after September 11th over a trillion dollars just to the economy, not to mention everything we had to rebuild. So that's why I'm so pleased this year that we kept the government open, that we worked for that certainty, that we got the trade bill passed, that we have just uh, had a budget that we came together and worked on a bipartisan basis to give you that certainty 
and that budget gives us more resources, resources on the defense front, more resources on the national security front, and is going to provide that security because in America that is not the greatest country in, and the strongest militarily in the world makes for a very dangerous world. So with your help, we want to make that a safe world, get our defense economy back into gear so that you can do all the innovation and the technology and the energy economy in that blueprint for Virginia, which is exactly where we need to be going. And we can do that when we have a safe and secure America. So thanks for all you do, and God bless. Thank you.